The Denver Broncos offense sparks a little bit in the first half, but fizzles out in the second half in a disappointing overtime loss to the Los Angeles Chargers. What is going on with the offense, and are they wasting a really good defense this season? Plus, it could be decision time as to what the Broncos' outlook looks ahead here after a 2-4 and four start. You get that and much more on today's Lockdown Broncos post-game report. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or whether you watch us on YouTube. Thank you so much. Whether the Broncos win or lose, we have you covered from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange.com. Sarah, Another post-game report here covering this Denver Broncos football team and unfortunately another loss where we're talking about the Broncos offense. And I tell you what, it was surprising because Denver in this game got off to a hot start on the offensive side of the ball. Russell Wilson got off to a hot start, going 10 of 10, finding Jerry Judy in a scramble drill, and then all of a sudden finding rookie tight end Greg Dulcich wide open for a touchdown on his second career reception to give the Broncos a 10 nothing lead and then from that point forward the offense reversed back into what we've seen them do so far through the first six weeks of the season frustrating times right now in Broncos country and rightfully so and Sarah I have to ask you is it time to press the panic button here on this Broncos team due to the offense well Cody before you press the panic button for the Denver Broncos offense I think you got to do what any good troubleshooter would do you got to try unplugging it and plugging it back in I'm not sure if the Broncos have gone that far to take that step yet it's usually always the last thing you do when you're troubleshooting why something's not working it's always the last thing that you check right and it's usually one of the simplest things like unplugging it and plugging it back in all of a sudden the reboot just works but man I'm really close to pushing the panic button myself. I think that, you know, a lot of times we remain optimistic. We give things time. There's a lot of people that kind of want to jump the trigger on the panic button early on when things aren't going well. But now I think it's safe to say we've seen six games of the same old thing for the Denver Broncos. It's not just a matter of unplugging it and plugging it back in. It's, man, what do we have the right pieces in place, right? You have Russell Wilson no matter what, and we'll talk about that later. But right now, it's the same story every single week for the Denver Broncos. You kind of give them the benefit of the doubt early on, thinking it's early in the season. It's a new offense. Everything's new for everybody. But at this point, you're six games in. You just had 11 days off to kind of get ready for this game against the Chargers. Not to mention your defense is playing exceptionally well. And, and the offense just can't do anything. I mean, it's, it's a historically bad Denver Broncos offense and that's not what anybody ordered when we said let Russ cook right you, you want the the full entree you want everything you want the five course meal you want everything that Russ is capable of we have got absolutely I mean just a fraction of an appetizer at this point we barely got any of what Russ can cook so Cody I think at this point everybody's kind of asking these same questions every single week why do the Broncos keep on doing this to themselves one step forward, two steps back has really been the trend here. And, and look, I, I think there's some issues that need to be brought up about the offense. I mean, there were moments in this game, Sarah, and specifically in the fourth quarter and overtime where the run game was working. I mean, there was a, a specific drive where the Broncos ran the ball with Latavius Murray twice. He had a five-yard carry. Then he had a, a four-yard carry. Okay, it's third and one now. What do the Broncos do? They go shotgun, and they pass the ball where Russell Wilson tried to connect with K.J. Hamler deep across the middle of the field. It was a little bit low, and it fell incomplete, forcing the Broncos to punt the football away. And, and part of me is just wondering, why? Why are we seeing this trend here? The offense has just absolutely sputtered. And here's the concerning thing, though, Sarah. When you look at the second half, you look at overtime alone, the Broncos offense had 72 total yards 
of offense and 19 total passing yards in those instances here. There is just so much inconsistency right now going on with the Broncos. And I think a lot of it too, Sarah, the offensive line is a huge question mark right now. And we thought it was going to be a big boost having Quinn Miners back, but the Broncos struggled to develop the rushing attack a little bit early on. They got it going a little bit late, but then they abandoned it to pass the football. And then they, they did an offensive line change in the middle of the game in the second quarter. They benched Calvin Anderson. They put Billy Turner at right tackle, and they put Cam Fleming at left tackle. And just seemingly, they couldn't do anything. There was no rhythm, no consistency there. Not to mention, the Chargers just sent a ton of pressure, and they got home at will with Drew Tranquil, who absolutely blasted Russell Wilson. I mean, there is some concern right now in the interior of the Broncos' offensive line. It's certainly not helping Russell Wilson in the offense at this point in time as well. It's really not, Cody. I mean, it doesn't make anything easier in terms of the evaluation, and it just... That's certainly one of the many things that's going wrong at this point. I think if the offensive line was playing out of its mind, we probably wouldn't ha be having this conversation, would we? So they're obviously a key, key reason why things are the way that they are. But we have to remember, again, you point the finger back at Nathaniel Hackett in this situation because all week long he was being very coy about what the offensive line would look like. And then you change in the middle of the game. It was before the end of the first half that I saw you tweeted out Billy Turner was out there and then we all took notice as the Broncos I mean they kind of flew right down the field before the end of the first half like it's not like this offense has been unable to do anything at all the frustrating thing is is that we're seeing them move the ball at times and then over stretches whether it's the red zone or whether it's the second half or whether it's you know the third I mean whatever quarter you want to choose they're having these stretches of absolutely being abysmal which Russell Wilson in the second half and overtime three of 11 passing Cody and and that's just unacceptable you just can't have it there was a sequence of plays near the end of the game where the Broncos they had three possessions and it was run run pass run run pass run run pass I thought we I thought we retired that when we got rid of Pat Shermer right so right now it's just a plethora of struggles a plethora of frustrations so many different reasons I think for people to be angry and upset which we're certainly seeing and feeling that from from Twitter and our engagements and and people that are just fired up in Broncos country right now on Broncos country we're equally as frustrated as you you know I, like I said we, we go to the games and, and sitting in the press box, like all of us in the media are frustrated at the offense because it's like, ah, man, the, you know, the defense is doing some really good things. And we'll talk about the defense a little bit later on here in the show, but just the offense continues to get in their own way. 414 on third down, 28.6% conversion percentage there. Only 13 total first downs in this game. Eight came by passes, three came by rushing attempts, and two came by penalty. Just not good enough for the Broncos offense to get it done. And it's not going to get easier at this point forward something has to give the Broncos continue to be in their own way how do they get out of it and what are some of the things that attributed it to the loss in overtime to the Chargers Sarah and I we dive deeper into that coming up here in just one moment but before we do that let me tell you about Nugenics sponsor of today's episode Lockdown Broncos post game report and if you're feeling like you just can't get in shape it's not your fault we naturally lose free testosterone the man hormone and it happens to every man it can make it more difficult to stay in shape and to be energetic and active Nugenics total T test Testosterone booster with testophen will help you turn back the clock, help you re-energize your workouts, and get you better results at the gym and help you look and feel how you want to be. Nugenics Total Tea contains man-boosting key ingredients like testophen, which has been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men. And because Nugenics Total Tea boosts free testosterone that the aging process robs, you'll feel stronger, leaner, with more energy and drive, and more passion too. Nugenics Total Tea is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. And now get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text NFL to 231-231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo their most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast. Absolutely free. Text NFL to 231-231. Text NFL to 231-231. Message and data rates may apply. Terms apply. Available at Nugenics.com slash terms. And Athletic Greens, our next partner, has a product that I use every single day, and that is AG1. And I started taking AG1 because many adults don't receive enough vitamins 
and nutrients in their day to day. And AG1 is part of my daily routine where I wake up in the morning, I fill up my cup with 12 ounces of ice cold water. I put one scoop in there that contains 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day off right. And this special blend of ingredients helps support gut health, your nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. And it costs you less than $3 a day and you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. And it's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. That is it. There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Sarah, continue on with our Lockdown Broncos postgame report. Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch us on YouTube. Win or loss, we have you covered every step of the way with all the objective Denver Broncos news content coverage that you need. Once again, penalties, missed opportunities, the same things that we've been harping on here in our postgame reports and the Broncos have lost four times this season, obviously moving to two and four on the season. Once again, Denver is their biggest opponent. Denver is always in their way. And man, that was just the case once again here on Monday Night Football. It was 10 penalties, Cody, for 151 yards in this game. And and obviously a number of those penalties, a good chunk of them came on pass interference calls against rookie cornerback Damari Mathis, who was making his starting debut for this Denver Broncos defense. And kudos to Mathis. I mean, amidst the penalty calls, I mean, he did bounce back and make some nice plays in this game. He didn't show a, a lack of confidence by any means, which you kind of worry about that kind of stuff when pass interference is getting called that consistently against the same guy and it did kind of feel at times like man some I mean this is just watching the game objectively or subjectively you kind of wonder were those calls all legitimately pass interference I'm not 100% sure about that but it just kind of felt like the officiating crew had one hand on the flag all night not only were the Broncos penalized 10 times I believe the Chargers were penalized nine times so but it just felt like I mean the Broncos were being punished throughout this game with just penalties at one penalty after another and specifically Damari Mathis I mean four pass interference penalties for I believe 89 total yards of of penalties out of those 151 so that was a big chunk of it Cody but at the same time there were other situations that the Broncos just couldn't get out of their own way the, the, one of the biggest plays of the game, obviously the, the play that kind of decided the game in the end, a muff punt by Montreal Washington in overtime. The Broncos just a short punt by the, the Chargers punter. The Broncos had too many guys in one area. Chargers player blocked PJ Locke right into Montreal Washington. And it was just miscommunication. Once again, as we typically have seen, there were also a number of times, Cody, that Troy Aikman pointed out after the game. He said the Broncos had 10 players out on the field whether that was offensively, defensively, or on special teams, he didn't specify. I didn't personally see it, but I mean, man, you just, you talk about all these different things and it's just like, how are the Broncos continually getting in their own way? This is just one game that we're talking about. We're not talking about 10 penalties for 151. We're not talking about that over the course of three games. We're not talking about all these things over the course of the season. This is one game that the Broncos only lost by three points in overtime. If they could get out of their way, man, this could be a really darn good team. I, I mean, it's just so frustrating because every single week we're talking about the same exact thing. Six straight games, we've been talking about the same exact thing every single week. At what point, you know, is enough enough? Well, Broncos country is frustrated, and rightfully so. I think we're frustrated too because you, you are right. Like, it gets tiring talking about the same things week in and week out. Can this team get out of their way? I mean, Sarah, look, I, I understand it's a brand new team, brand new head coach, brand new quarterback, brand new offense. There's a whole lot. This is a very brand new coaching staff altogether across the board here. And it just it feels so frustrating just seeing the same issues six weeks into the season impact them. And, and look, I mean, we're we're not even really focusing on how good the defense played despite everything. I mean, 
what they were able to do to Justin Herbert was unbelievable, forcing him to pass for 57 total attempts. Now, coming into this game, he's one, he was the least sacked quarterback. Denver was able to sack him twice, once with Baron Browning, who's just unbelievable. Baron also came with an interception. And then you had Matt Henningsen making his first regular season career sack as well. Oh, and not to mention, Denver intercepted him, which Justin Herbert hasn't thrown many interceptions this season. I just... It feels like the defensive performance is being wasted here. I know we'll dive a little bit deeper into that coming up here in just a moment. But, I mean, even going through there in overtime, I mean, we talk about them going three and out. I mean, the defense can only do so much, right? The defense had its moments where they needed to get off the field, and they simply didn't do it. They, they struggled on third down, 11 to 22. They gave 50% on third down here. But going back to the penalty piece that you had just mentioned here, here's the Chargers, okay, first downs. They had 24 total first downs in this game on Monday Night Football. Seven of them came on the ground. Ten of them came through the air. Seven first downs came via penalty. When was the last time this happened? Oh, yeah, it was the Seattle Seahawks week one season opener, and the Broncos lost that game shorthanded by one point. And just once again, Sarah, just missed opportunities for this football team, and it doesn't get any easier going forward for the Broncos because they face a 4-2 and two Jets team that's coming to town on a short week very aggressive defense under Robert Sala. And then you have the Jaguars, then you have your bye week, and then you have the Tennessee Titans, Baltimore Ravens, Las Vegas Raiders, Los Angeles Chargers again. And then once again, you have the Kansas City Chiefs twice. I mean, it is a brutal stretch here for the Broncos. So what does the outlook look like? Not so promising right now, Broncos country, but we take a look into some of the other things as well coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Price Picks, the other sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos Post Game Report and Price Picks is daily fantasy sports done right. And with the Price Picks app, you choose two to five players that you're focused on heading into the week. And these players will have a projection that's set by Price Picks, and you simply choose whether or not they will have more or less than their Price Picks projection, which could allow you to win 10 times your money on any entry. There's no compete against other people it's just you versus the projections that are available so download the price picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports first time users can receive a 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on if you deposit 100 dollars price picks will give you 100 dollars if you deposit 50 dollars price picks will give you 50 dollars don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 dollars <laughs> The Broncos are in really bad shape after six weeks of action here. Where do they go for here? What does the AFC West look like? And are the Broncos wasting a really good defense this season? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. We appreciate you so much. Whether the Broncos win, whether they lose, we have you covered here every single day, all year long, Locked on Broncos. Sarah, I mean, through six weeks, I don't think anybody imagined the Broncos being at two and four, considering, you know, a brand new quarterback in Russell Wilson and the excitement around the offense and maybe having an offensive play caller that can get things going. When you have more questions than answers after six weeks, I would say that there is a really, really big problem. And when you look at the Broncos inside the AFC West, the Chargers and the Chiefs are both at the top right now, tied at four and two on the season. Denver is two and four on the year. It doesn't get any tougher here. I mean, what is to give here with this Broncos football team? What is next simply? Uh, this is the, this is the the toughest question I think right now because I, I think everybody on Twitter has come to the consensus already, right? They want Nathaniel Hackett out of there. Everybody's already dreaming of the next head coach for the Denver Broncos. And I tend to kind of try to stay away from a lot of that, Cody, and until it's really time to start thinking about it. But you can't help but ask the question right now because of a few things. I mean, first and foremost, you're wasting the best defense scoring wise, I think, in the NFL. If not, if not number one, they're certainly up there among the very best. The Broncos are simply not giving much of anything defensively. We've talked about this before. I mean, they didn't allow a single touchdown in this game to Justin Herbert. Like you mentioned, they sacked him a couple times. They got an interception off of him. But Justin Herbert, this is the first time in NFL history he threw 57 passes in a victory without a touchdown pass. No other quarterback in NFL history has ever done that. That's, I mean, that's an impressively bad, you know, fact for the offense, the Denver Broncos offense, right? So, I mean, there's no discipline with this team. The penalties have continued week after week. And remember, that was not a problem with Vic Fangio. They were one of the least penalized teams in the NFL with Vic Fangio. The offense has not shown any signs of progression. 
horrible execution every single week. They're not doing the basic things right on offense. There's multiple times in this game, like we mentioned, where Troy Aikman pointed out only 10 players on the field. You've got constant issues with, you know, the flow of the of play calling, and you've got constant issues with players now on the sidelines, like Jerry Judy venting to Melvin Gordon. Who knows what that was all about? Like you mentioned when we were just kind of talking, I mean, it, it was just a different vibe from Justin Simmons, almost like when, it, you know, it felt like might have been his last game when he was heading into free agency, kind of like that mentality from him. Just everything right now leads me to believe, Cody, that is, is Nathaniel Hackett really the answer for this team? I know I wanted him to be the coach during the, the hiring circuit, but at this point you have to ask yourself the $245 million question. Is he the right guy? to build Russell, to build around Russell Wilson, because Russell Wilson is the sun, the moon, the night, the day. He is the Denver Broncos for the foreseeable future. You got to do what's best for him. And, and that begs a huge question, right? And, and I agree with you. Like for me, I've always been on the, the principle and the standpoint, like I'll never call for anyone's job. That's not my place to do. I fans can do all they want. But like for me, I, I think putting it into perspective, I mean, this is a tough position to be in if you're Nathaniel Hackett because things have not gone right, right? The offense, what you were brought in to do as a head coach, as a leader of men, was to transform the Broncos' offense, which was really bad last year because you have a very good defense. Could you imagine if the Broncos' offense was even like 15th in the NFL in a lot of the major categories? They'd be winning games. They might, they might have only lost one or two games total at this point instead of four. But it's just like the hypotheticals, we, we can only play it in our heads so much, right? And, and for Broncos fans... They want to see a better offensive product. It starts with being able to run the football. Denver simply couldn't do that. Uh, and, and the passing game has not been what the Broncos have needed from Russell Wilson either. And I think a combination of that is on Russ. A combination of that is on Nathaniel Hackett as well. It just doesn't seem like the Broncos offense is on the same page with one another. And that is a huge issue, especially after six weeks. So I do think that there is a lot of pressure right now on Nathaniel Hackett. Now, for me personally, I do not believe you can fire a first-year head coach six games into the season. I don't want that for anybody in the NFL, even for like a Raiders guy. I wouldn't want that for them. I mean, because these are at the end of the day, these are people, and it's their job. And yes, they have to perform better. But I think at the end of the day, I, I don't. I think he's running out of time. And if the Broncos continue to struggle this way, Sarah, I mean, George Payton's going to have to be forced to make a very very difficult decision, which ultimately reflects on him because he and, and staff are the ones that hired. Nathaniel Hackett and as much as I like Nathaniel Hackett's personality and how he's been very good to me he's been very open he's been very honest this is a results driven business and the Broncos results on offense have been very rough so maybe I mean maybe because the pressure's on maybe we see a new play caller coming into this week here for the Broncos maybe it is Clint Kubiak maybe it is Justin Outen who's listed as the OC but Nathaniel Hackett's someone who calls plays Maybe it is on them to get it going. But then again, even a changing of that guard there, Sarah, it, in my opinion, is not going to change the Broncos' issues that they have on the offensive line with Lloyd Cushingberry, who's really struggling right now. Communication between the interior offensive linemen. Obviously, you have two new tackles that got thrust in. Billy Turner's first action of the NFL season. And then you move Cam Fleming from right tackle to left tackle. And you and I have given the analogy, try wiping with your other hand, your non-dominant hand, and see how that feels. I mean, it's an adjustment period. And the Broncos offensive line is struggling. And in return, Russell Wilson is also struggling because of it. Not to mention, he also suffered a hamstring injury in this game. And it's a short turnaround against a very aggressive New York Jets defense. The Jets are fired up playing at 4-2 and two right now. The NFL is weird, but it's not fun right now, Sarah. None of this is fun, highlighting yet another loss for this Broncos team. Any final words of wisdom or imparting thoughts here for Broncos country? Well, I think you build off what the defense is doing, right? You want to be able to capitalize on the defense. You know what you're getting week to week with the defense. If, if at this point we know what we're getting with the offense, we know what we're getting from the defense. Zach Wilson, Cody, has barely completed, I think, 56, maybe 57% of his throws since he became the starter for the Jets. You know that an aggressive defense like Denver, a very smart, well-coached defense, obviously, they're going to be out there ready to make plays against a young quarterback like that. We saw that in his rookie season remember when Vic Fangio was still the DC the Broncos kind of ate Zach Wilson for lunch on a Sunday afternoon in Denver so you really hope for more of the same but you have to hope for the offense to turn things around because what else do you have at this point you can't have anything else but hope that they'll turn it around because Russell Wilson is the guy like I mentioned he's the he is the sun he is the moon he is the east he is the west it's Russell Wilson's team for the next four years at a minimum 
So you got to hope that the offense turns things around and the defense continues to put the clamps on because they're going up against, like you said, an aggressive defense in the Jets. But the Broncos need to be the aggressors going forward. Otherwise, they're not going to they're not going to achieve anything. That well, folks, we ran into an issue there. We lost Sarah here, but I imagine what he was trying to say is that the Broncos can't keep doing the same things over and over and over again and expecting different results here. The definition of insanity. A lot of questions remain for this Denver Broncos football team. Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett will meet with the media on Monday at 3.15 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll get some more clarity going forward. But the pressure is on this Broncos football team and for Nathaniel Hackett to turn things around or else he could be one and done. Sarah Bettinger and myself will have you covered every single day here. Locked on Broncos.